Scott Manley here and I am in a room in Barcelona, which I'm going to say, uh, if you've ever seen that meme that says, hello, it's Scott Manley here and you're reading this in my voice. Well, I have the kind of same experience. When I see the word Barcelona, I hear Barcelona. Freddie Mercury. Anyway, today I want to talk about the fairing recovery from SpaceX and their STP Falcon 9 uh, Heavy, Falcon Heavy launch. So, um, just yesterday, SpaceX posted an amazing video that comes from an engineering camera on board the fairing. It's looking back up behind it, and we essentially see the separation and the descent. And I'm going to say this is a fantastic video because it shows the ionized air that has been heated by the fairing's descent and re-entry. So, well, first of all, the fairing is dropped at about 11,400 kilometers per hour, and it's still over 100 kilometers up in the air. So by the time it starts hitting the atmosphere, it's going at a fair clip. It is very low density, or has a very high surface area to volume ratio, so it decelerates quite quickly. But I mean, you see a lot of these effects, a lot of the air flowing around it producing ionized air. Now, it looks purple in the video, but I think that that is not an accurate representation of what you would see with your naked eye because the engineering cameras that SpaceX use, I think they remove the near infrared filter so that they can get better low light performance when they're doing nighttime launches. And that will mean that the infrared actually shows up as this indigo purple color. That at least is how I judge it based on other things. So you shouldn't necessarily expect that if you were in this fairing that that's what you'd see. But you would probably see some glow from this. You would definitely see those sparks. And you would also see those two holes at the bottom where the air is flowing through that and getting ionized. Uh, many people have speculated about those holes, but those holes are there actually to depressurize the fairing during ascent. If you're going up very quickly, you want to make sure the air can escape from inside and uh, not blow your fairing apart, because that would be rather unfortunate. Without those, you would have a positive air pressure inside, and then you might lose your fairing a little earlier than you expected. So this is a magnificent video, and I'm really, uh, it's really cool to see this. One thing that has changed between the previous versions is it looks like the para wing that they deploy for the capture, it looks to me like it's deployed at 90 degrees now to the angle. So the fairing is going nose first while it is in the upper atmosphere. And I'm guessing it's designed to be neutrally stable so that they can just control it using the reaction control thrusters on board. But once it's descent, they used to fly it nose first. But if you look at the video that Elon Musk posted as well, then it shows the fairing being captured going sideways. So I think this is an intentional change to make sure that the fairing is actually traveling on a steeper trajectory and going more slowly. It might also be that just by rotating the fairing at 90 degrees, it has less lateral, if there's a crosswind, then it experiences less of it. This is entirely me trying to guess as to why they would do this, but it does appear that between the first video and the second video, this is evidence that they have rotated the fairings power wing. And I'm obviously reading too much into it, but you know, whatever. I also uh, got an amazing set of images of the fairing that was returned to port after recovery. Um, this is by Jack Baer, who is, he's a photographer in Southern California. He does a lot of launch photography and you should absolutely check out his website because of course it's great to support any creators that do this kind of thing. But yeah, he got a lot of great shots showing the interior of the ferry. Now those panels you see there, those are sound reduction panels. I think they are supposed to reduce the amount of sound levels for the payloads inside. Obviously, launching a rocket is a very loud experience, uh, but most of the sound actually comes from the fairing being pushed through the air at supersonic speeds. So those panels are supposed to cut the sound down so that the satellites don't get exposed to the same level of vibration. You can also see signs where the, uh, where the uh, where the tanks are, the pressure tanks that contain the reaction control thrusters, that's the nitrogen. Uh, there will also be stuff that actuates the pneumatics 
for the fairings. SpaceX, unlike most other people, uses pneumatically or mechanically actuated fairings because you can't really test a pyrotechnic. I mean, you, what you will do is you will test nine out of 10, and if they all work, then you assume that number 10 will work. But with a mechanical system, you can replicate it, you can test it, you can test it, and you can be sure that it works. And that obviously then makes a lot of sense if you're then going to reuse it because the same hardware is, is just, you just give it more air and it works again. So it's really cool to see all this stuff about the fairings. I actually went to the SpaceX factory in Hawthorne a couple of years ago, and that was one of the things I really paid a lot of attention to. Obviously, the engines were really cool, but seeing the fairing setup being built was, was uh, especially amazing. So the fairings, they, they think they cost about five to six million dollars per pair, which is quite substantial. And a big part of this is because it just takes so long to build them. There's a lot of manual labor involved. And when I looked in the construction set, I haven't obviously got any pictures of this because I, you're not allowed to take pictures on this tour. But they have these very long cells and the people go up and they're manually applying the composite material over the top of the shell. And to get the material in the correct position, there's laser projectors in the corners that will project a green outline on the fairing surface or on the surface of the shell so that they can make sure they're putting things in exactly the right place. Now, I imagine that that's probably changed a bit because SpaceX have been very, very good at updating and refining their production system. But I think that the fairings are still one of those things that take them a very long time to build. So getting one recovered in this launch is obviously a pretty big deal. And if they can start to reuse them at a reasonable rate, that could seriously affect their bottom line. I mean, I think the real question will be, or the real measure of the success will be if we see Ms. Tree getting another buddy out there to help them catch both fairings at the same time. So yeah, that's uh, the coolest videos of right now. This is me in Barcelona. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.